Coming up today, Samsung Electronics reports a huge jump in operating profits in the third quarter. Korea's biggest tech firm also announces a $10 billion share buyback plan. Korea is rolling out a new banking transaction system this week. That will make it much easier to transfer money and pay the bills. Plus, the US Federal Reserve holds rates steady but says it will determine whether to raise rates at its next meeting in December. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Thursday, the 29th of October. You're tuned in to our mid midday newscast here on Adirang TV. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. I'm Mark Broom. And we begin with some good news for Samsung Electronics. The Korean tech giant saw its operating profit jump more than 80% in the third quarter from a year before, driven by strong chip sales and a pickup in its mobile business. Our Kim Min-ji has the details. Samsung Electronics' third quarter figures show the tech giant's earnings are on an upswing. The company had an operating profit of about 6.5 billion U.S. dollars in the July to September period, up 82 percent from a year ago. Sales rose almost 9 percent, while net profit also climbed nearly 30 percent during the same period. Samsung attributed the boost to brisk chip sales and a weak Korean won against the U.S. dollar. It says the week one led to a gain of nearly $700 million during the third quarter. Its chip business, which has been the company's cash cow, posted an operating profit of $3.2 billion, setting a new record. The ITM mobile division, which have been a drag on the company's earnings, posted an operating profit of $2.1 billion, up from $1.5 billion last year, thanks to sales of lower-end models put up to compete with Chinese rivals that have been eating into Samsung's market share. Despite the rosy report, the company doesn't seem so optimistic about its prospects in the fourth quarter. The tech giant said its earnings are likely to decline from the third quarter as it expects the exchange rate to have a negative effect, as well as seasonally weaker component sales. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. Now, Samsung Electronics has also announced plans to buy back shares with its 50 billion US dollars worth of cash reserves, a move seen as an attempt to appease investors. Samsung says it will buy back and cancel 10 billion US dollars worth of shares while raising capital spending by 14 percent this year. Sluggish smartphone sales have caused the company's profits to fall below analyst estimates. While the Korean tech giant has been piling up cash, pressure has been mounting from shareholders to boost returns. Now, there's going to be a big shift in the way we do banking in Korea from this Friday. The country is introducing a transaction system dubbed Money Move. It allows numerous bank accounts to be synced to an online portal and sourced to a main account as designated by the customer. This means all credit card bills can be automatically charged to the master account without having to transfer money to different banks. People in Korea will also be able to pay their phone bills and insurance premiums through the system. From February next year, the service will expand to all transactions. Local banks are competing to capture their part of the market worth over 700 billion US dollars in annual transactions. Benefits to entice customers include loyalty points, zero transaction fees and lower credit interest rates. Korea's household debt continues to swell as demand for mortgage loans keeps rising. The Financial Supervisory Service says outstanding household debt rose by 5.4 billion US dollars in September to stand at $543.9 billion. Now, although the September gain was slightly lower than the on-month rise in August, the agency says low interest rates and recovery signs in the local housing market contributed to the rise in loans. The average loan delinquency rate was at 0.66% as of the end of September. That's down 0.1 percentage point from the previous month. 
Now, it shouldn't really come as too much of a surprise that there is a vast disparity between the rich and the poor here in Korea, as there is in a great many other countries. But the rate of increase is actually getting worse and worse by the year. The top 10% of the population owns two-thirds of the country's wealth, while the bottom 50% hold a mere 2%. Son Jong-in has more. New data released by economics professor Kim nak yeon at Dongguk University shows that the share of wealth held by those in the top 10 percent of the population reached 66.4 percent in 2013. That figure is a slight increase from the average of 63.2 percent recorded between the years 2000 and 2007, right before the global financial crisis. Two years ago, to be in the top 10 percent, you needed at least 196,000 U.S. dollars in assets. The assets held by the top 1 percent also rose from 24 percent to 26 percent during the same period. In contrast, the bottom 50 percent have seen their wealth drop, more evidence of Korea's growing wealth gap. Yet the disparity isn't as great as in other countries. The share of wealth held by the top 10 percent in Korea was far lower than in major economies like the U.S. and the U.K., which was 76 percent and 71 percent during the same period. The report also shows that rate of increase for profits from accumulated assets was faster than the rate from employment income, proving that money can make more money. Son Jong-in, Arirang News. Now, the U.S. Federal Reserve has held interest rates at near zero again, but it has sent a number of notable signals that a rate hike is on the table, at least, at their December meeting. The Fed has removed a sentence from their statement which said financial developments and economic activity overseas could slow the U.S. economy. Fed policymakers also pointed concretely for the first time that the next meeting will be the time they'll be making a solid decision on whether it will be time to raise rates. So analysts say the Fed is on hold for now, but the message is keep your eyes open because a rate hike could come in December. Korea's top automaker Hyundai Motor has reached an impressive sales milestone in the United States, but the situation isn't as peachy for Hyundai in the world's biggest auto market, China. Gonsoa has the details. Hyundai Motor has hit sales of 10 million in the U.S., reaching an important milestone in its combined sales since its entry into the market 29 years ago. Hyundai Motor America said Wednesday that it's thanks to the company's strategic rollout of its product line in the country. Hyundai entered the U.S. market in 1986 with a subcompact XL, which became an immediate success, selling over 100,000 units in just seven months. The champagne might be on hold, though, as Hyundai Motor's popularity in China appears to be on the wane. For the first time in six years, Hyundai's ranking in terms of sales and other factors has dropped below a Chinese automaker. For the first nine months of the year, Chang'an Automaker was ranked fifth behind General Motors and several Volkswagen branches. Hyundai Motor dropped one spot to sixth. Industry watchers say that as Chinese cars gradually get better, Korean car makers will suffer the most as their brand value and overall image lags behind that of European and American automakers. Chinese automakers have enhanced their quality and safety standards. They have yet to reach the level of Korean cars, but they are half the price. The expert adds that small-sized SUVs are currently the hit auto trend in China, so Korean automakers should be looking to launch new lower-priced models in the country. All of that goes against the rosy expectations Korean car makers had earlier this year when Hyundai opened its fourth plant in China in April to expand its market share. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Now, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says the issue of Japan's wartime sexual enslavement of Korean women will be discussed at next week's summit talks with President Park geun hye Speaking to reporters on Wednesday, Abe said he wants to exchange honest opinions with President Park on the issue. The Japanese leader added that he also wants to discuss what kind of relationship the two countries will establish going forward. Abe said he expects both sides will have a lot 
on their agenda. Monday's summit talks in Seoul will be the first official one-on-one -on -one meeting between Abe and President Park since both of them took office. Now, the National Assembly's Special Budgetary Committee has projected that South Korea's military maintenance budget will rise sharply over the next five years. Officials say next year's budget will be roughly 2.4 billion US dollars. That's up 9% compared to 2011. In 2020, it's forecast that the government will need a military budget of 3.1 billion dollars. Now large scale upgrades like the KFX fighter project, an anti-ballistic missile system and so-called kill chain systems are forecast to eat up a lot of the budget in the coming years. South Korea has been elected to a fourth consecutive term on the UN Human Rights Council. The foreign ministry says South Korea will start another three year stint on the Geneva based council from January next year. South Korea has been a member of the 47 member HRC since its creation back in 2006. It's one of five Asia-Pacific countries that won a seat on the council. The others are Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, the Philippines and the UAE. Now, the country that poses the greatest threat to the United States is North Korea. That's the assessment of the Washington-based Heritage Foundation. In its annual report released on Wednesday, the think tank classified North Korea as the only country that poses a severe threat to vital U.S. interests. The classification is the highest in the five-level threat assessment scale. The conservative think tank said the North was given the rating after boosting its military capability and ramping up its hostile behavior, including its cyber attack on Sony Pictures last year. The report put Russia and China in the second highest high threat category. Staying with North Korea and the country is expected to suffer from yet another major food shortage next year. North Korea experts say the poverty stricken country will uh, fall one million tons short of next year's expected minimum food consumption amount of roughly uh, 5.4 million tons. It's expected to be the worst food shortage North Korea has seen since Kim Jong-un took power in 2011. Experts point out a severe drought that plagued the North this summer has led to a 10% drop in this year's food production levels. A decrease in agricultural imports from China due to soured China-North Korean relations is also believed to exacerbated the situation. The Korean Red Cross is in the process of gathering video messages from 10,000 war-separated South Koreans with the aim of sending the messages to North Korea next year. The organization says it embarked on the project in August, visiting homes around the country to record the messages. Up to 13 minutes is allocated for each family to send greetings and share stories of their everyday lives. The Red Cross says it hopes the project will promote exchanges between separated families, as, as most of them unfortunately pass away without ever getting to see their loved ones again. It's estimated that some 4,000 war-separated Koreans die every year. Now, two NASA astronauts have been doing their first ever spacewalks, dangling by cords from the International Space Station as it whizzes around the Earth. Commander Scott Kelly and flight engineer Chell Lendgren spent more than seven hours performing maintenance work outside the orbital station. You're seeing some of the video there that NASA broadcasts live on the internet. The two astronauts carried out upgrades and maintenance tasks, including preparing the docking zone for commercial spacecraft.
Well, that's pretty much all we have for now. If you want to catch up on more of the latest news, you can always download our smartphone application. Just search for Adidang TV in the usual places. Also, our website can be found. Just go to adidang.com forward slash news. As always, have a great day. And thank you, as always, for tuning in. Goodbye.